In New Zealand, there's a study that was done in a town called Dunedin, um, in which uh, a few thousand individuals were studied from birth up to their, into their 20s. What they found was that they could identify a genetic mutation, an abnormal gene, which did have some relation to the predisposition to commit violence, but only if the individual had also been subjected to severe child abuse. In other words, a child with this abnormal gene would be no more likely to be violent than anybody else. And in fact, they actually had a lower rate of violence than people with normal genes, as long as they weren't abused as children. Great additional example of the ways in which genes are not be all end all. Fancy technique where you can take a specific gene out of a mouse, and that mouse and its descendants will not have that gene. You have knocked out that gene. So there's this one gene that codes for a protein that has something to do with learning and memory. And this fabulous demonstration knock out that gene, and you have a mouse that doesn't learn as well. Ooh, a genetic basis for intelligence. What was much less appreciated in that landmark study that got picked up by the media left and right is take those genetically impaired mice and raise them in a much more enriched, stimulating environment than your normal mice in a lab cage, and they completely overcame that deficit. So when one says in a contemporary sense that, oh, this behavior is genetic, to the extent that that's even a valid sort of phrase to use, what you're saying is there is a genetic contribution to how this organism responds to environment. Genes may influence the readiness with which an organism will deal with a certain environmental challenge. You know, that's not the version most people have in their minds. And not to be too soapboxing, but run with the old sort of version of it's genetic and it's not that far from the history of eugenics and things of that sort. Um, it's a widespread misconception and it's a potentially fairly dangerous one. One reason that the sort of biological explanation for violence, uh, one reason that hypothesis is potentially dangerous, it's not just misleading, it can really do harm, is because if you believe that, you could very easily say, well, there's nothing we can do to change the predisposition people have to becoming violent. All we can do if somebody becomes violent is punish them, you know, lock them up or execute them. But we don't need to worry about changing the social environment or the social preconditions that may lead people to become violent because that's irrelevant. The genetic argument allows us the luxury of ignoring past and present historical and social factors. And in the words of uh, Louis Menard, who wrote in The New Yorker, very astutely he said, it's all in the genes, an explanation for the way things are that does not threaten the way things are. Why should someone feel unhappy or engage in antisocial behavior when that person is living in the freest and most prosperous nation on earth? It can't be the system. There must be a flaw in the wiring somewhere, which is a good way of putting it. So the genetic argument is simply a cop-out, uh, which allows us to ignore the social and uh, economic and political factors that, in fact, underlie um, many uh, troublesome behaviors. <laughs>